Welcome to Restoration, creating pathways through which knowledge flows. For our opening paragraph series, I want to read today uh, from Faulkner, William Faulkner's Absalom, Absalom. Um, I look to Faulkner because he is a man who was deeply concerned with the South, and he was interested particularly in that fallen South that he was himself a part of, that South that had to find a way to rise after the defeat of the Civil War. And it was a South that was deeply divided. It wanted to imagine itself in some terms that the reality um, of life circumstances could not allow um, that image to go unchallenged and uncontested, even in the minds of those who were seeking to install it. And Absalom, Absalom is like, um, like Faulkner's work, very dense, uh, complicated prose. But it is um, really important uh, work for a time like now. Now the South is no longer simply uh, the South of the antebellum era, the North and the South being divided by its economic base, one being industrial and the other being agrarian. Uh, Now the South is much more complicated and we see our borders expanding outward and we have our Uh, leaders speaking from the platforms of the Oval Office about the marauding hordes uh, coming to invade a kind of lawlessness that gets uh, characterized by uh, those who are fearful of the dark masses that may, in fact, overtake um, the status quo. And so... It seems to me Absalom, Absalom is a terribly relevant text, which is unfortunately so. Uh, But Faulkner was trying to find for himself, I imagine, some answers about what humanity is and what their capacity is for both good and for ill when it is unable to reconcile with um, the brotherhood, the sisterhood of humanity in general. And so you see these twins that emerge throughout Faulkner's work, and you see certainly the twinning uh, that happens in Absalom, Absalom. So this um, Faulkner's prose is dense and long. Uh, He doesn't follow uh, grammatical rules in the ways that it is taught in schools. Um, But I'm going to read what he writes because he is a master. From a little after two o'clock until almost sundown of the long, still, hot, weary, dead September afternoon, They sat in what Miss Colfield still called the office because her father had called it that, a dim, hot, airless room with the blinds all closed and fastened for 43 summers because when she was a girl, someone had believed that light and moving air carried heat and that dark was always cooler and which, as the sun shone fuller and fuller on that side of the house, became latticed with yellow slashes full of dust motes, which Quentin thought of as being flecks of the dead old dried paint itself, blown inward from the scaling blinds as wind might have blown them. There was a wisteria vine blooming for the second time that summer on a wooden trellis before one window, into which sparrows came now and then in random gusts, making a dry, vivid, dusty sound before going away. And opposite Quentin, Miss Coldfield, in the eternal black which she had worn for 43 years now, whether for sister, 
father or not husband, none knew. Sitting so bolt upright in that straight hard back chair that was so tall for her that her legs hung straight and rigid as if she had iron shin bones and ankles, clear of the floor with that air of imp impotent and static rage like children's feet and talking in that grim, haggard, amazed voice until at last listening would renege in hearing sense, self-confound, in the long-dead object of her impotent yet indomitable frustration would appear, as though by outrage or recapitulation evoked, quiet, inattentive, and harmless, out of the binding and dreaming and victorious dust. That is the opening paragraph of, in my estimation, one of Faulkner's most uh, powerful and brilliant works. I hope that you will go find this classic work and read it for the first time if you have not encountered it or read it again. This is Restoration, Creating Pathways Through Which Knowledge flows.